Hello everybody, my name is Lylanthia, and today we're going to be opening a deck builder's toolkit for Shadows Over in Estrad. So step one here is going to be opening the old pocket knife to get through that pesky shrink wrap. Be careful to come down the sides so that we uh, don't accidentally clip the cards. So you have this fancy little media insert guy. Doesn't really have any cool art on it or anything though, so we'll just move right past that. Uh, inside the box, we have two Shadows Over Instrad packs, two Battle for Zendikar packs, as well as all of these different packs of cards. It comes with a rules reference card, which is pretty handy for newer players. I'm going to give this one to uh, one of our cohorts who's just learning how to play, so that way he can have some uh, information on how the game works in his pocket. And then we have the big color guide that goes over what exactly each color is about and then goes over how to build a deck. Sort your cards, find your key cards, explore your options, focus your deck, add your lands, play and find your deck. So those are all fantastic steps and a great asset to new players. For me it's unfortunately trash. Now let's go ahead and crack open these guys first. We'll leave the packs for last. So as in the past with the Deck Builders Toolkit, I believe these involve kind of archetypes to help you decide what decks to build. So just to kind of go through things here, we got a Bane of Balaged and a Hedron Archive. Looks like this first one here is a red colorless deck. So they give you some staples to begin building. Looks like... This is for Red Ramp with Eldrazi's. Then, looks like we've got a black life gain idea behind it. It's a little port cutthroat, very powerful. Make allies, gain life, swing with your little team that you buff and make bigger. And then you got another Unknown Shores. And then we've got a blue-green deck. That looks like it's focusing on just kind of getting value where you can. So, bouncing your opponent's guys, getting through with your guys, fourth unknown chores. And then we move into red blue. Wonder if there's any prowess guys in here. So there's some card drawing, some flying, uh, slip through space is kind of neat. So just kind of get through your team. Get one prowess guy in there, but the reckless bushwhacker is for leading in the charge, playing it, and winning on the same turn. So, those are the archetypes. We had black, white, life gain. We had blue, red, get through small dudes. We had colorless and red Eldrazi. And then we had the green, blue, get about you guys deck. So then, there's the stuff everybody gets. Every deck builder's toolkit comes with these cards. So, let's talk about these rares for a moment. They're all reprints. None of them are printed in the core set or any other standard legal set, but they are standard legal. The one that piqued my interest the most is Soul of the Harvest, as uh, I played him in standard for a while. In the mid-range decks, where you're playing creatures and creatures and creatures, helps keep you up gas in the late game. It's a pretty nice guy. And then, everyone gets a Stasis Snare, and you'll go through it and find that it's just some general good cards in each color, and it starts building up your having multiple copies of things to play. We got a second Zulaport Cutthroat, we got a Lightning Axe, that's fancy. So overall, I feel like the Uncommons right now are worth less money overall than they were the last time I reviewed. A deck builder's toolkit, which makes these a little bit worse. But I'd say we still have a pretty healthy amount of cards to build a beginning standard deck, or even just playing casual. Now, the big appeal is basics. No one ever brings their basics to the card shop. Card shops sell them for five cents a piece. I believe there's 80 basic land in here, so at five cents a piece, that's four dollars worth of basic land right off the top. 
Once you factor in your four packs, MSRP at $4.19, you're already at the value of your deck builder's toolkit. You also notice that just like with the last ones, you get two ofs of all of the dual lands that come into play tapped. Now they don't gain you a life this time, so that part's kind of sad, but I think they're still very useful to a new player who's beginning who may not have you know $200 to spend on a land base. It gets you to the point where your land deck is playable. You might win a couple of packs here or there in uh, your FNM and slowly build yourself up into having a better deck. And now for the other random aspect is the packs. Actually first, let's just take a moment here. I want you to appreciate how nice these lands look. Just like with the previous Innistrad, we have this absolutely beautiful landscape. And I think it turned out quite well. So we've got all these sweet, sweet Innistrad lands. Gives you plenty to play with. There's, I think actually 20 of each. So there should be enough land in here in one of these to build five decks. Now let's see what the booster packs yield. So this is the first Shadows over in a Strahd pack. I haven't opened a lot of this set yet, only a booster box. We'll see if we get anything good. So I feel like this card, tapping two creatures and investigating, is pretty solid for your budget mono white standard deck. Reduced Ashes did me well in draft. We've got a Synergy with Clues Guy. We've got a Skeleton Key, which is an interesting card. Inner Struggle, which is great removal in red. Epiphany at the Drown Yard, that's a fantastic card. And there you go. So that's pack one. Epiphany at the Drown Yard reads, reveal the X, top X plus one cards of your library and separate them into two piles. An opponent chooses one of those piles to that has a on your hand, the rest of the graveyard. So it's a uh, factor fiction that when you pay the same amount as factor fiction does four cards, but it gives you the chance to do more and it's instant speed. So it comes in on your opponent's turn too. Ghostly wings, new card. Giving things plus one plus one and flying it limited is vastly underrated. Broken concentration, countering a spell and madness. New Hero's Machinations. If the game combat on your turn, target creature you control gains indestructible. And then I can do one damage to a blocking creature. That seems solid. We got a Stitchwing Scob. Discard two cards. Return Stitchwing Scob from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And then, ooh, Relentless Dead. I think as of the time of filming this, these are $17.35 at the shop I bought this from. So that's uh, fairly solid. And the Top of the Gloom. Cool way to turn on graveyard strategies, especially in EDH. Flips over with Valerian, turns into a 4 4 hex for Tranquil. Anyway, let's put this Relentless Dead in a sleeve. Always have extra sleeves around, it's just good for you. Alright, let's check out these Battle for Zendikar packs. Ooh, Foil Rolling Thunder, just right off the bat. Okay, collect Occurrence, it's a good solid tempo card. Keep their guys off the board while you're working on uh, getting your guys on the line. And then also awakening a land leader in the game. I'm kind of disappointed there was no Oath of the Gatewatch or Magic Origins in here. But, you know, you take what you get, I guess. Um, Touch of the Void's a decent red removal spell, especially for that red Eldrazi deck that it's kind of working its way in here. Uh, whenever a creature attacks this turn, it gains lifelink. That seems like a solid card for the Black White Life Gang deck. We've got Tarji Warcaller. Enters a battlefield, plus two, plus two to your team. Seems great. Malak, you're familiar. Flying Death Touch, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one, or gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Another fantastic way to take advantage of the life gain cards. And Planar Outburst. Great control card. So I feel like there's a blue-white control deck in here that could be reasonable, just out of these packs. And start off with a Colostri Healer. It's a card I really enjoy. 
Volcanic Upheaval, Angelic Gift, giving flying and replacing itself, which is important for enchantments. Fertile Thicket, get some lands. Evolving Wilds, always fantastic. Ooh, Grove Tender Druids, I love playing this guy in draft. Headless Behemoth, sacrifice two Elder Rosy Signs, return it from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh, so you just get to keep on giving. Okay, Coastal Discovery, three and a blue, draw two cards, awaken four. And the rare is Endless One, everyone's favorite Eldrazi. And then we've got the foiled Salvage Throne. So two foils out of this, not bad also. Let's go ahead and sleeve that guy up. So overall, I'd say this is a decent haul. Um, just looking over all the individual cards, um, I would say it gives you a lot of opportunities to make some decks to play with your friends, all for the price of $20. So while I like the Origins ones better, I'm going to have to say that this was decent value, and I would recommend picking it up again. So, uh, yeah, that's my review of the Deck Builders Toolkit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and film another video where I build a deck out of all this. So definitely stick around if that's something you'd like to see. Thank you for watching, and uh, feel free to leave a comment below if you'd like to give me any feedback.